but um, you also have to look at what's real and you gotta be super honest with yourself. And I think that's what's also so healing about jiu-jitsu, you know, not to get too deep, but I think um, that's why, you know, again, Mike and I were talking about this earlier, why martial arts really is a very healing process for people is because you can't run from yourself. Yeah, you're right. That's that's strong. Strong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is beautiful. Right. Right. Over. So from here, go back for a second. What time would you fight? Because then you're, you're training for more real life situations. Now we Cool guys, so any questions on any of the, of the techniques that we did? Feel pretty, pretty, pretty good about it? You, you guys really uh, got way more proficient as we went on. Um, really good questions, uh, really good job. Um, nice, any, any questions at all? I didn't quite, I don't think, get the position when you're on the mount, you're getting your legs as tight. Yes. You know, like, Maybe he's a little bigger than me, but it shouldn't matter. Like, I feel like I'm not getting that correct tightness. Right. I think a couple things. First, be aware of your foot position, um, of, of not being... A couple things. Um, our weight is either uh, going to be on the mat or on the opponent. And sometimes we have to find a balance between both of those things. Um, if our weight is just on the mat, right? They can move. If our weight is just on them, sometimes they can move us. And it's the same thing. Here's a rule across the board, which I always tell my students, right? If you can't move them, you move yourself. If you can't move yourself, you move them. That's always going to be the answer because you can always put your weight in two places. If Mike's down, let's say I have side control, for example, right? I'm in side control. This is where, you know, a lot of people talk about invisible jujitsu or whatever. Um, here I'm in side control. It's going to look like this exact same thing. I'm here, right? But where's my weight right now, Mike? Not on me. It's definitely not on you, <laughs> right? It Jeez. looks like it is, but Mike's going to be able to move himself, right? Because there's so much space. There's so much space, and there's no weight down on him, right? But uh, actually, let me, uh, I want this to you. Let's say you're down here. Now I'm gonna put a lot of weight on this guy. Ready? I'm gonna put a tremendous amount of weight on him. You okay? Your ribs okay? <laughs> <laughs> All my weight is on him right now. <laughs> but now move me. I fall off. Right? So we have to understand that both offensively and defensively of like, okay, where do I find that balance? And what can what do I need to do to take away his defense, right? So if I'm here and I'm in the mount position, but all my weight's on my knees. I'm not going to be able to isolate him so much. So stay a little bit lower and squeeze the knees and kind of adjust your weight to where you need to be. Because there's, again, it's, it's rare that you can, you can always do the same thing in every position and just do that one thing and just chill there. Um, again, this person's trying to get out. They're skillful, they're creative, they're strong, they're fast, they're slippery. We're going to have to adjust all the time. There's not going to be just one position you can do straight across the, straight across the board all the time. And anatomy, you have to adjust. anatomy, too. Like when yeah. I'm full mounted on someone, I'm a little person and I'm thick. So I'm literally floating on them. I feel my inner thighs and I'm not even touching the floor, depending right. on the weight class. Right? So like I do sometimes float on a person mm -hmm. and like body surf them because right. my knees can't touch the floor in a full mount position. 100%. So, um, the game will change depending on your size, but I'm heavy and thick, and I fight fucking heavy as tall, long people who are wider at, at the top. So if I'm sitting on them, I'm not even touching the floor sometimes. So that does have a, a play in it. I think, I think that's a, a, a great point, you know, for a lot of different positions, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, certain people, maybe with long legs, you're gonna be more of a closed guard guy than say Mike, you know? Mike's gonna be maybe more of a pressure passer though than that guy. Yeah. So it, it all it all depends on, on what uh, what your body type is like, um, and what your mentality is like. All those things. Any uh, any other questions, guys? I have two questions for you. Yeah. Tell me, like you know, you guys are like coming from being a fighter. Like the mentality of how much it really is a mental game. Like you're always like a good guy that explains very well, and I think a lot of people don't understand how mental it is and everything. <sighs> 
cheese. I, I mean, that, there's a lot of meat on the bone there in that question. I think uh, it, it's a great question. There's a lot to it. I think, um, man, I, you know, I uh, I tried to take uh, emotions out of it. I, I realized very early on, like when I was on the, the finale of The Ultimate Fighter, that emotions can easily get the better of you. Um, you know, training with Diego Sanchez day in and day out, obviously it's still very different than an actual fight. But you, you know what you're kind of capable of, right? If you're training with someone and you're just getting your ass kicked, you're like, all right, well, I'm not on this guy's level. And you, you kind of know that. If you fought for real, probably wouldn't go well. Um, but when you're training with someone and, like, you're both going pretty hard and you feel pretty good and it's competitive, you're like, okay, skill-wise, like, all right, there isn't this huge disparity here. Like, I'm okay. But then when you fight and you're just like a deer in the headlights like I was, you realize, man, emotions are a real thing. Octagon jitters are a real thing. But is it a real thing or was my perspective skewed? And I realized the power of, of the mind in that um, what we focus our attention on, that's where our mind's going to go and that's what's going to lead us away from what we're actually supposed to be doing. Where should my attention be if Mike's trying to hurt me? be on Mike mm -hmm. and what he's doing his body language and what he's doing to set up his stuff my mind was on oh man the contract oh man all my family's watching oh man all these people oh man all these commissioners and I, I gotta do a pee test over here and this is all hectic and all these people wishing me luck and uh, okay and it was like a blur it was a complete blur I was hitting pads backstage for like 10 minutes and I was exhausted why? Because I'm out of shape? No, you're emotional. I was overly emotional. Right? So I think um, being aware of your own fears, being aware of your own anxiety, being aware of all those things, you have to face yourself at the end of the day. And the great thing about combat, and Mike and I were talking about it earlier, is that it reveals the truth, whether you like it or not. And, and that's the that's the most beautiful part about it and it's the most difficult part about it because you have to face yourself all the time you're going to find out if you're ready you know now crap happens certain things happen bad decisions happen injuries happen you know you slip on a banana peel out there whatever that stuff happens too right but um you also have to look at what's real and you got to be super honest with yourself and I think that's what's also so healing about jiu-jitsu, you know, not to get too deep, but I think um, that's why, you know, again, Mike and I were talking about this earlier, why martial arts really is a very healing process for people is because you can't run from yourself. You know, a lot of the people that are out there, it's, it's the same reason why uh, a lot of people in their cars are really quick to get into a fight because they have no idea what that actually means. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you want to go, bro? It's like, <laughs> you've never fought in your life. You have no idea what that means. You don't know what a punch means. You don't know what, you know. So th there's certain consequences that we're just not aware of. When we're training, we become very aware of a lot of those things. We're like, oh, yeah, um, I have a weak guard, or my passing sucks, or, you know, uh, I need to work on my kicks, or uh, I have no concept of range, or... I'm really good at this or you know so you become super aware of yourself and your vulnerabilities and your strengths and you start to kind of calm down a little bit you get more humble and um, yeah it's uh, you just you, you it helps you become I think a little bit more honest with yourself and also in me going oh, I'm good man I'm ready for this finale like I'm fine I'm not nervous like no you are and I should have been more aware of that. And what was I, why was I scared? What was I really actually worried about? And why wasn't I working on those things? Part of it is lack of experience. Part of it's, you know, maybe ignoring certain things. So I realized that if I'm ignoring certain things, I'm, I'm only hurting myself. And I, at the end of the day, I have to go back to the mat and I'm going to have to face that. I'm going to have to face that weakness. I'm going to have to face myself. So... It was a, a constant process of that, a constant process of that. And, um, you know, I by no means did I have a perfect process, 
but um, I realized, you know, how weak or how strong the mind can be. Um, what you focus on, your awareness, your perspective, um, and just trying to hone in on that warrior mentality and being around also other people with that warrior mentality. And I think that's the, that's the power of the tribe. That's the yeah. power of this gym or a lot of the gyms with that culture of being around with other people who have that same mindset or have a, a strong mindset and learning because we're learning from people all the time. We're, we're learning from their insecurities. We're learning from their strengths. We're learning from their confidence. Um, and I think that's huge. That's huge. Having that influence. There, there's big time power in, in being in a certain tribe and a certain culture. And I think that's what makes martial arts also so so effective as long as it's a healthy culture, right? There's bad cultures in martial arts schools all the time too. Um, but um, yeah, and then also my, my perspective was I want to take as little damage as possible. Um, and there's an opportunity cost. Um, you know, I think, you know, unfortunately for my buddy Daniel Cormier, I think um, last night he was fighting Stipe Miocic, for example. I don't know if you guys saw the fight. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he was winning those first three rounds. But would you guys say he was taking no damage in those first three rounds? Was he taking some heavy shots in those first three rounds? Mm -hmm. I would say so, too. Yes. Um, so we're not invincible. And a strong mentality is awesome. A courageous mentality is absolutely necessary. But there's levels, right? Um, i trying to think. Um, it doesn't mean I can't get burned by fire. It doesn't mean I can run through a car or human at the same time. I need to understand that. And I think walking through four ounce gloves against another heavyweight mm -hmm. probably isn't a good or the best approach. It's only a matter of time. Even let's say, uh, let's say I win that fight. Um, I only have one brain. Um, concussions are a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, it takes your toll on your body. Um, now you got all this money, but now you're drinking, you know, filet mignon smoothies for the, you know, the rest <laughs> of your life. You can't talk. You can't. So, and, and some of those things are unavoidable. You know, it's like I didn't want to get hit, but guess what? I got hit a lot of times in training and fighting. And, um, so we're all trying to figure that out. We're trying to figure that process out. Um, but trying to be creative, and I also I try to come from the perspective of do we really know what we're talking about? Um, so many times I was like, ah, man, I got to figure that out. Exactly what we need to do. Or I listen to my coach completely, um, and I think that that's the only way to do it. Well, the reality is that we're all figuring it out as martial artists. And I think that's what makes combat so interesting is that if we're not evolving, we're not getting better. We don't get to a certain point and be like, this is perfect. We figured out boxing, guys. We figured it out. We figured out wrestling. We figured out jiu-jitsu. We have this perfect process. All you got to do is follow these steps. Um, it's not like that right now. I don't know if it's like that ever because the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, I think the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, you know, like I think with anything, um, the more you search for certain things, the more you realize that there is. It's like, oh, guys, it's, atoms is the smallest thing in the universe. Oh, no, no, no. Electrons and protons, guys. No. Oh, no, it's quarks. And it just keeps getting smaller. Or we look at the universe and we think that it's a certain size and we realize it's expanding. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. And, um, it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. The, the, the deeper you go, the deeper you realize you have to go. Um, so I think we're all trying to figure this out and, we, and we're all trying to get better at this process. And I think that's what should keep us humble and, and that's the value of training with different people and, and learning from different people, of trying to find that process that works for you, that approach that works for you. Um, we're all just trying to make it better. And I think um, we have to take good advice and then see what we can take with that advice and make it better, too. Um, I don't have all the answers. No one does in martial arts. Um, and if they say they do, they're full of shit. <laughs> I 
thing, you know. Um, but uh, yeah. I have one yeah. more question. You got and then it. Then I'll let everybody out for what, what was the most comfortable weight class for you? Okay. And can you give me one weight uh, cutting tip that won't kill me in a hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh so shit, much. man. Um, a 155 by far was the most comfortable weight class for me. Um, I, I, I would typically cut from about uh, 172 to 175 um, if I got fat or if I was coming off an injury. Like when I cut to 45, I actually came down from 187, which was bad. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, as far as weight cutting, man, you know, things have changed a lot since, since I was um, fighting and cutting weight. Uh, and I think I became kind of a guinea pig for guys like George Lockhart, who, who was one of the guys who helps Connor and DC and, and those guys. Um, I was one of the first guys to work with George Lockhart. And I think he probably learned a lot of things since my weight cut that went wrong. Um, first of all, I would say this, everyone's different. Some guys are sauna guys. Some guys don't even want to hit the sauna. I know what? Give me a, a, a sauna suit and put me on the bike. I'm going to sweat it out. Um, some guys are going to, you know, work out and drill with the sauna suit or a sweat suit. Uh, other guys want to go into the bath and they put a little alcohol and uh, Epsom salts to kind of pull the water out of you. Um, that way your head stays a little cooler. Um, I wish I tried that. I, I never did that. For me, it was like, being in the sauna for hours and hours and hours, you know, gets draining, um, and uh, it, it was tough, you know, cutting that much weight. I think I cut for my fight at 45. I think I was cutting like, I think maybe like 14 pounds in 24 hours, which is a lot, which is just ridiculous um, and unsafe. Um, but um, I think the main thing is staying on your diet as much as possible uh, and then trying to actually cut. So there's losing weight and there's cutting weight. Cutting weight is when you're sweating it out. Losing weight is when you're like dieting and just training. Um, so I think just being on your diet year round, um, you know, is always going to be a big help. Trying to cut as little as possible I think is important. And there's that, that uh, you know, benefits versus, you know, the disadvantages of, okay, do I want to be the bigger man? Uh, and have no energy or do I want to be a little bit smaller but have my full energy, have my full strength? Um, and I think at 45, yeah, I might have been the bigger guy out there, but um, I didn't have any energy or strength. Like against Diego Nunes, I felt that um, I felt pretty strong, but I didn't have a whole lot of energy. Like I felt a little bit sapped. And against Jose Aldo, I felt like I didn't have either of those things. I, um, I remember I was hitting pads to warm up again and my legs were cramping up uh, like five minutes in I told my crew I didn't even want to get it into my head because again perspective is, is very important and I said guys I want to save it for the fight um, I'm good I'm just gonna I'm just, my warm-up is done I, I knew I had to save it I remember I think I had like Jose Aldo's kind of we we're standing but I kind of had his back up against the cage and my forearms were just completely cramped and it was round one and I just said to myself I was like all right, Kenny, just like calm down, breathe, chill. This is a long fight. And that was a scary place to be in, man. So, you know, you, you take your risks sometimes in the fight game, and sometimes you get on these vision quests, and you're like, i got to do this. And, and uh, sometimes you find out it's the right decision. Sometimes you don't. Um, but always learning, man. There's always, um, there's always something to learn from, um, and especially when you make your mistakes, you know. And then, like Mike and I were talking about earlier, our goal, at, our goals, I think, as coaches, is also help people learn from our mistakes. You know, we're in a lot of ways we're sacrificing ourselves to get better at what we do, but also to help pass on knowledge to you guys and um, have you guys learn from our mistakes. Eh, maybe you shouldn't go down that path, or maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that instead of this. And, you know, and everyone's different too, so. What may be right for us or wrong for us may be right or wrong for you guys. So um, it's a it's a process that you know on, only you guys can walk that path and, and test it out for yourself. But uh, I didn't really answer your question in regards to weight cutting specifically. But I think um, you know dieting well, eating the right foods, and then water loading. Do you know about water loading? 
I, you know, I read, I read Chell's book, you know, and like yeah. everyone rehydrates, but he talks about how important it is to drink to lose the weight. So yeah, so basically, you know, we have a lot of salt and sodium in our system, and one of the ways to drain that out is by drinking a lot of water. And it's a couple things. Um, not only is it getting the sodium out of your system so you can sweat easier, but also it's training your body and tricking your body into thinking that a ton of water is coming into your body, so you'll sweat a lot easier, expel it a lot easier. Um, so it helps with that process. Um, How much water are you, is it a gallon you're carrying, like these weightlifters? Yeah, so I, I, here's my process. So let's say I was fighting Saturday night. On Sunday, I would start with, um, I would drink pretty much like a gallon or close to a gallon every single day regardless. But I would go, I would start a gallon and a half on Sunday, two gallons on Monday. I did three gallons on Tuesday, and the worst thing about Tuesday, and it's insane, because you can actually die from water poisoning. Yes. That's what actually happened at Max Holloway. That's he had the same effects of, of being concussed. Uh, he, we actually interviewed him before his fight. That's why he dropped out. He actually he got water poisoning. Oh, he had taken too much water, so his brain was just not functioning properly. So th it's super dangerous. So, anyways, I do three gallons on Tuesday, and the thing about Tuesday is that's when you travel to your fight city. So I'd be on the plane and like be taking off like, oh my God, dude, I'm so bad, dude, this is the worst. So I'd, uh, as soon as I woke up, I'd try to get a gallon in me as quickly as possible so I could pee without, you know, peeing myself. Uh, and yeah, I still had two gallons to go by the time I, I got there or was on the plane. Um, that is a brutal process because you're literally peeing nonstop. Uh, but it's a, an important process because you're getting the sodium out of you and you're, you know, teaching your body to sweat. And then I think Wednesday, I'd go one gallon, Thursday, half a gallon, and then it would be half a gallon up to like noon. So after 12 p.m., I wouldn't drink anything, um, depending on how close I was in weight. And then Friday, I'd sweat out if I need to, and I was good. But um, I wouldn't be able to sweat as much if I wasn't putting water in my body in that, in that process. Does that make sense? Yeah, so. Gotcha. It, it's a little bit tricky and then after that back in the day we could do IVs so I would have you know a nurse practitioner come in give me an IV and rehydrate me with um, you know sugar in the water and all that stuff and I keep asking saline. too many questions but do you really think it hydrates your brain faster? No. We were talking about that. 100% no. more than 24, 48 hours. Yeah, it's like 48 brain. hours or more more. Now think about this. Right, Not only right. that, your brain's taking trauma. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you have a dehydrated brain, a dehydrated body, and then your body's taking shots on top of that. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Crazy. But anyways, that's, that's the way. So you spoke about the, the mental game. and I'm a yoga teacher and practitioner, cool. and I firmly believe that anything that happens on the mat happens off the mat. Yes. And you do too, and yoga. Mm. Um, and I, in yoga, we have something called pranayama, which is breath practice. Yes. And as a new practitioner of jujitsu, I feel like I really struggle, especially being on bottom. Yes. Because I start to panic. Yes. I try to focus on my breath, but then like you just said, I'm not, now I'm like, should I focus on my, or should I focus on what I'm doing? Yes. And I'm trying to catch my breath. By the time I get it, I'm tapping. Yes. And I don't know how to, I know how to control it, but I don't know, I guess, where to focus my attention other than on my breath cool. or what to do with it. It's, it. Listen, the first part of it, right, is being aware of it. You can't fix it if you're not aware of it. So you're aware of it, which is awesome, in a very specific way because you're, you're relating it very specifically to being on bottom. Um, so that, that's, that's important. Uh, that's a big step. So, uh, what is it about being on bottom that makes you nervous? I just feel like I, I can't get out. I mean, you showed us some techniques, yes. but yes. even then I just... You I should just be a master struggle. now. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I will spend six minutes there. Yeah. And I, I'm trying. I'm cool. fighting. So I, would, so I would say this. I, I would don't say, feel like I'm going to die. It's just It's frustrating. Right. I can't breathe. 100%. So I would say this, first of all, um, and, and this goes for a lot, of, a lot of different positions, but getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. And it just means putting yourself in that position as much as possible now. 
Um, and, and you know, we, we'll go back to the driving analogy. Um, in the beginning, it's like, you know, your head's on a swivel and you're super nervous when you're first getting your license. And you're like, oh my God, like, what, what do I need to do? And I'm stopping and I'm herky jerky, right? Um, but after a while, you get more comfortable driving, you get more relaxed, you start calming down. And, you know, um, I, I think that's the cool thing about jujitsu is that um, there's a lot of positions that I sucked at. I've been tapped millions of times, literally. Um, and I still make mistakes. And there's still a lot to learn. And there's, you know, there's space for becoming more comfortable over time. Um, for me, uh, one thing I've become aware of over the last, you know, know, 10 years or so was where I carry my tension. So I'm tense, but where does it go first? Uh, it tends to go to my face first. Grimace or make weird, why am I doing that? I'm just drilling a move or I'm just training or I'm in the mount. Why the hell am I grimacing? Um, so becoming aware of those things and where you're holding your tension. Why are you nervous? What specifically is making you nervous? Is the person, do you think the person's gonna hurt you? Do you, are you uncomfortable with space? Are you uncomfortable with the weight on you? Um, you know, is it a, is it a past uh, thing in your history? Is, um, is it not understanding the position? Um, there's so many different things that come into, into play and like identifying those things and like, oh, okay. So I just need to do this more, or I need to ask more questions of really understanding what the hell is gonna help me get more comfortable here, or my hands are in the wrong spot, or I get claustrophobic. Um, I, I used to be really claustrophobic. Uh, and, you know, um, you know, jiu-jitsu was one of those things that, you know, obviously I had to get over, like being mounted or being inside control. Or, um, so it takes time. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything in life that's not, um, you know, if, if things are too easy and you get good at it too easy, like, I, I don't know, I think there's, there's something wrong with that. I think all the good things in life, you think about anything that's difficult, when you go through it, it all becomes worth it. Like, there, there's um, gratification and pushing through. Adversity is there for a reason. Um, Things like CrossFit, things like Jiu Jitsu, uh, things like working out. Your muscles get super sore. Why can't we just get strong? Why can't we just build muscle? It doesn't work like that. The universe isn't built like that. Um, adversity is there specifically to make us strong. And I try to remind myself of that, you know, in a, in a variety of things. Sometimes little things bother me more than big things. Um, but you know, just, again, changing your perspective, you know, hard things are good, struggle is good, adversity is good, as long as I'm heading in a certain direction, I'm cool with it, I'm fine, I'm going to embrace it, um, and it takes time, and you'll realize that your capacity to deal with adversity, and your capacity to deal with difficult things gets greater and greater over time. But it doesn't start from nowhere, right? You have to train your mind, you gotta train your body to be able to push through those, those what we call barriers, but they're not really barriers. Anyways, hopefully that helps, guys. Listen, let's take a picture. I gotta drive to the airport. Yes. <laughs> you gotta eat. Yes. So we wanna yeah, thank Kenny for coming. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.